Greetings, dear ones. I'm Kryon of Magnetic Service. If I told you that there is great awareness from my side of the veil of who is hearing this, would you believe it? It's tough enough to grasp the idea that a man in the chair has stepped away and his consciousness is watching. It's hard enough for you to, to really believe that this is a message from the other side of the veil. Those who feel the energy of this know it is so. But there are so many who sit with a bubble around them. And I'll call it the bubble of their belief based only on what they've seen and heard created through the synapse of the brain, through the experiences. The same synapse that teaches the child that a stove is hot is the same synapse that tells you this is foolishness. Because it's not logical. It doesn't fit in to the parameter of what you think it should be. But then there are those who have let the bubble enlarge. There are some unplained, unexplained things that go on that human beings often just put away. They tuck them under the mattress because they can't explain them, but they often will use them and believe in them. They'll be the first ones to create beautiful poetry or painting and, and at the same time reject God because it's not in their reality. The first ones to compose beautiful music or or any of the other interdimensional things that come right from the creative source and yet shut out the creator in their personal life. And we understand this. It is absolutely typical of survival. You have to know what's around you in order to, to move from one place to another on this planet. You must. That is the survival we have talked about in an old energy. It makes total sense. We've given the paradigm so many times. It's like you're in a cave and you only, you only go out to hunt. <laughs> and when you're out there, there's danger. And you come back to the cave and you surround yourself with what you know. And that is then what's comfortable for you and you live your life and you go to work and you have families basically in your cave with what you know. And if somebody comes along and says, look, it would be, it would be great if you could experience this, this new energy, and you say, no, and I'll tap into it the way I want to, but I'll then hold it into my cave because I need it for survival. I don't want to interrupt an energy that might then keep me from working the way I have or earning what I have or perhaps losing my friends. Offending my family? And I'm going to tell you, I know who's listening. And I know that that's the way of it. Now there's a group which includes those who might sit in front of me or in the room who have expanded that bubble and have discovered some things along the way that it was every bit as difficult as they thought it would be. It comes with a price, and we never said it wouldn't. And the price is that you are different. But now we talk to you in a new energy about being different in a different way. <laughs> what if I told you that in this energy there is now support for being different? Not being different in a hermit that believes in strange things and is, is shunned but different in a way that you would react to what other people have to react to also. You realize you're sitting next to those when you're outside of this building, when you're not listening, for instance, to this particular message in any way, that apart from this, you have to interface with other precious human souls. And in that, this is where you can show the God inside. 
A new way of being different is being balanced. It is the new message of Kryon. It is time. And it's where you don't put this aside, this whole idea of who you are and the God inside. You don't put it aside and only then hold it to yourself in meetings like this. At the same time, you don't go out and broadcast it in the street. What you do instead, show people who you are. Slow to anger. Generous of spirit. How about this one? Uncompetitive. And here's what I mean. It means when somebody else is telling you about their life, in the process of listening to what is going on with them and their success, what are you doing? What is the psychology of listening? And I will tell you what it has been in the past, especially when you get together with, with gatherings of people you don't know. You know what it is? You're not listening. You're computing what to say to them that will impress them. That's the psychology of listening. Let me ask you this. Do you think the masters did that? Did the masters have to impress anyone? Did the masters have a story that they told that was, was really impressive and people would listen to how good they were? And the answer is no. They could see it by how they looked at them. They could see it in their countenance. They could see the love of God in them. We've said it before. Every master who walked this planet, every one of them, people wanted to follow them around. Not because of their wisdom or even perhaps because of the healing power that they had showed. It's because it felt good to be in the presence of a human being that was balanced. I want you to start with your children and your grandchildren. I want you to start with family and be balanced around them. That's the hardest thing you can do. And even if you don't think it's successful, listen to me. Even if you don't think it's successful and they're not changing at all, I want to tell you, you are showing them a template of balance they will never forget. No matter who yells at whom. When you don't yell back. And you can hold it together. I mean really hold it together with love not with stress and when I say hold it together it's not you then just trying to hold it together and sweating <laughs> they'll see you sweat no I'm talking about a countenance that is so disengaged from the drama of the family that you can sit there in your bubble of love and be balanced in the midst of no matter what is going on I want to tell you that is what they will remember and the ones who remember it first are the ones who are young and watching. Some of them are participating. Most of them are simply watching. And they'll see in you everything we're talking about. At work, it's the same. At work, there's always somebody you don't like. There's always somebody who's trying to rise to the top and step on somebody else. There's always somebody who has no integrity, and you know I'm right. Because they've grown up in their cave of survival that says, you're weak and they're strong and they've got to get where they're going. And it doesn't matter who you are or what you do or what you say. You know I'm right. And what do you do in that case? How do you defend yourself? What master have you known on this planet that was good at defending themselves? The best defense they had was balance. Because everybody saw it. Everybody saw it. In the workplace, it is the same. I'm not saying to sit there and be stepped on. I'm telling you there'll be a time when everybody knows who you are. And that particular inappropriate behavior by others will be seen as inappropriate behavior by all. You're going to see it in your politics eventually, believe it or not. You're going to see a rise of gentleness eventually, believe it or not. 
And the ones who are most balanced will be the ones who are elected, believe it or not. Because as human nature begins to change over generations, there will be an unacceptable behavior above all of the else. You would not elect a known thief, a known murderer. It's unacceptable. Now project that to somebody who does not have integrity and you can see it in their eyes. You're not going to elect them either. Balance will be king in all things in family, in workplace, in politics, in the relations of country with country, instead of knee-jerk reactions of punishment or sanctions or unhappiness, there's going to be balance, believe it or not. And this is the new human, and this is the new earth. And the beginning of it is listening to these words. And that is what we teach, and it couldn't be more succinct. And that's what we will continue to teach until my partner takes his last breath and moves on to his new assignment. It's the way it should be. And there are those who won't believe it. Turn on your news. You won't believe it. You'll say, well, crying was wrong. Well, turn on your news in 75 years, and you'll be able to do it. Because you'll be here and watch what's going to happen. The ball is rolling. I'll be back. And so it is.